Renee Woodrick is an accredited exercise physiologist and exercise scientist who has extensive experience in working with and assisting a large number of clients who experience a wide range of problems, including spinal cord injury, chronic pain, cerebral palsy, and motor or sensory deficits secondary to stroke or traumatic brain injury. We're really lucky to have Renee speak to us today about her experiences with the Molly Suit, a relatively new and novel device proving to be life-changing to many people with chronic disability. Renee for joining us today. Um, yeah, I'm really happy to be speaking to you and I know you've got a lot of experience with the Molly suit and it's something really worth spreading the word about, I think. So <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for having me. <laughs> oh no, it's it's a real it's a real honor. Thank you. And um I wanted to start by asking you what um if you could tell us a little bit about your role as an exercise physiologist. Like what what do you do with people? Yeah, so basically uh help to treat a lot of different conditions through exercise. Okay. Um, I've been fortunate enough to stumble across this molly suit and we, so we're using the molly suit in conjunction with the exercise physiology as well to help sure. people. So yeah, basically um, people come to me with, can be from a, a range of things from like pain or um, balance problems or falls, things like that. And I just prescribe exercise to help people uh, recover and have their best quality of life, I guess. So yeah. Oh, that's great. Mm. It must be really satisfying. And yeah. Yes, I really enjoy it actually. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've uh, definitely found my, my niche. So yeah, yeah, I do enjoy oh, it. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and how long have you been working with the Molly suit for now? Been working with the Molly suit for around two years now. So oh, right. it's only okay. it's relatively new on the market. And uh, I came on the scene when was it? August it must have been August 2018. So, okay. yeah. yeah. It's been around in Sweden for a lot longer than that, but in Australia, yeah, only a couple of years. So, wow. Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about what the Molly suit is and its mechanisms of action? Like, how does it help? Yeah. So, basically, it's a, a two piece garment. Yep. It looks similar to a, a wetsuit, <laughs> I guess. So, it's quite tight fitting. Yeah. Um, it's, it's lined with uh, electro stim pads on the inside of it, so, which okay. contact with the skin. Yep. And uh, yeah, we basically deliver a, a really low intensity, low invasive electro stimulation therapy. So uh, yeah, it has a control unit at the front, and yeah, it takes about sixty minutes to to undergo the therapy. Yep. And uh, yeah, you can pretty much put the suit on and then continue with your business. So you can either exercise in it or. Uh, yeah, relax either way, whichever way you want to do it. But uh, yep. yeah, so I guess basically it works. To put it simply, as I said, it's like a low frequency or a small bandwidth electro stimulation therapy, which is individually programmed depending on how somebody presents to me and what their conditions or, or issues are that they want to address. Yep. Um, yeah, so it's tailored to help treat with specific needs. So basically what we're doing is hitting the central nervous system and okay. then therefore evoking a response from the brain. So we're actually getting your brain to work, yeah. which is uh, more so than just getting a muscle to contract via stimulation. So we're getting the brain to, to work as well. So yeah, similar to TENS, but not exactly the same, okay. much lower intensity. Yeah. 
Sure. Yep. Sure. And um, I understand for spasticity, if um, if you've got a spastic muscle, it seems to stimulate the. Is it the antagonist muscle? Um, That's right. So, so then the rigid muscle can relax. That's correct. So generally, in day to day life, if I've got a muscle that's contracted, um, yep. if I stimulate that the opposite muscle, it will release that contracted muscle. So that's how we help to treat spasticity, I guess, yeah, in that way. It's called reciprocal inhibition. So, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yep. And that would be really useful for conditions like cerebral palsy, I guess, wouldn't yep. it? Yep. Yeah. Anything where, or stroke, where we've got a, something in a set position. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask, what, what are the clinical conditions that, um, that you can use the Molly Sue for? Oh, there's so many. <laughs> so initially it was designed to treat cerebral palsy, yep. but once they started using it over in Sweden, they noticed or realized that they could use it for so many other conditions. So I see people with MS, Huntington's disease, Parkinson's stroke, pretty much anything where mobility or balance are affected or, or motor control over movements. So yeah, but MS patients, so a lot of them come in that are very tremory and they can't balance on one leg, but so difficult to do uh, just simple tasks like getting dressed. So standing on one foot, putting, you know, putting your pants on that type of thing. Yeah. And it's amazing the difference between before, like if I do a test where they're doing like a single leg stance test to yep. one hour or 45 minutes even into the session and yep. I'll do the test again and they're just still so they can balance on one leg and hold it for a much longer period of time. It's all, it's all just down to that muscle control. Yeah, it's a motor control basically, yeah. Oh, that's great. That, that would make it so much easier to put on shoes, um, like you said, get dressed. Anything, just bending down to pick something up off the floor, you know, that, yeah, makes the life a lot easier. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. That you can use it with MS patients too. That's great. And, mm -hmm. and Parkinson's patients, I guess that would, have, um, that would help with their balance too, wouldn't it? Because I think balance... Yeah, similar sort of thing, yeah. So, I guess it doesn't really matter about the condition as such, like the, the clinical condition. It's no. more to do with their ability. So... Uh, there's not like a set way to treat a Parkinson's patient as opposed to an MS patient. It's more like if somebody can't balance, this is how I'm going to treat this person or, you know, depending on what they, what um, issues or problems they present with, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. And that, that would make a, a difference to their lives if they've got better muscle control. Um, because I guess um, simple things too, like brushing their teeth maybe might become easier if they've got better muscle control. That's right. Yeah, just general daily activities that we, um, we take for granted that, you know, people who are, aren't able to do these, these things, it's, it's a huge uh, improvement to their quality of life and feeling of independence. Just oh, to be able to do these things on their own. Yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. Mm. Making a cup of tea, maybe. <laughs> yes. Even holding a cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. Holding a cup. Yeah. Um, what about chronic pain? How does it, how can it help with chronic pain? Um, I think, can it be used for conditions like neuralgia? Um, uh, yeah, like fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia, yeah. Yeah. sorry. Yeah. Fibromyalgia, yeah, yeah. Fibromyalgia. So it's... Um, I've got a couple of fibro patients at the moment. Yep. So basically the settings are totally different to treat chronic pain than they are to treat, say, spasticity. Oh. So we go for a more global or all over body approach with pain management. Okay. So it's a very, very low stim for those patients because you've got to be a bit careful but uh, that you don't stir things up too much. Right. But, uh, yeah, basically, it, as I said, when you hit the central nervous system, Yep it hits these receptors in your brain called GABA receptors, which then release serotonin into that spinal cord and yeah, through the, through the system. So the serotonin then helps with um, pain management and yeah, it basically releases. Does it release endorphins? I think. It releases endorphins and serotonin is the main one for yeah. pain reduction. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I have heard that it can work similar to um, morphine. 
I think it hits the same similar receptors. Yes, yeah, that's right. The opioid receptors in the brain. Yes, yeah. similar to morphine. Yeah, that's right. Wow, yeah. that that that's really good because for a lot of these, there there are no cures. Like fibromyalgia, I think that's a very difficult condition to treat, and it's a very painful condition too if you have it. Yes, but it's um, random pain. You know, there's no specific or rhyme or reason as to why they get a pain in a certain place or when it occurs. So. Mm-hmm. I would recommend for someone with fibro to use Molly Soup, but also movement as well. What about migraines? Because I, I, um, I do get the occasional really bad migraine. Have you had any experience with people using it for migraine pain? I don't think... I don't think I have. I haven't used it really for that purpose, but yeah. I would imagine with that, it'd be more like a, a muscle relaxant. All right. Like the, yeah, to help yeah. with... So and also vasodilation, so the blood flow, opening up those um, like arteries and things in the brain to help the blood flow. That's usually how a migraine occurs when they sort of tighten and shrink. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so the Molly suit does increase blood flow as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, how, how does it work, do you know? How does, how does it increase blood flow with the electric? Well, I guess it's the same as, say, a muscle re- relaxation. So you have muscles within well, your vasculature, so it just releases those muscles and opens everything up and then the blood flows more freely. So, oh, yeah. of course. If you've got a tight muscle, yeah, it's, it's mm-hmm. letting go. Okay. Yeah. That, that makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many roughly of, of your own clients um, do you think have used the Molly suit now over the two years you've been working well, with? I would say in this current role I'm in, um, majority of my clients are Molly suit users. Okay. Uh, so some people like, to, as I said, we like to cross over and use the x along with Molly. Some people just do straight Molly therapy, but yeah, I'd say it's probably 80% of my clientele are using Molly suit at the moment, so yeah. Oh, fantastic. And what percentage of the ones that have used it have genuinely seen benefits um, from it, do you think? Well, I guess everybody responds to it a little differently. So I would say roughly 85 to 90 percent of people that I see do get a positive benefit or a positive response out of it. Yeah. Oh, that's, that, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So quite successful, yeah. Can you share a couple of stories with us, perhaps, of some clients that um, you've introduced the Molly suit to, like what their condition was, and a little bit about the story of how they've used it and what sort of improvements um, they've experienced? Yeah, so I'm thinking of a lady I see who's uh, sort of late 30s, uh, has cerebral palsy, mm-hmm. and since using the suit, uh, is able to do just small little tasks such as like feeding herself with a spoon or oh, nice. that type of thing, yeah. which to you and I doesn't sound like much, but to somebody who can't do these things, it's, it's a massive deal. So oh, yeah. even just like brushing hair or, you know, like self-care, little things that they can do just around the house. Absolutely. Um, also improvements with assisted walking. So a lot more fluency with walking and, yeah, it's basically just helping... We're not going to cure anything, but just to help improve quality of life, just by giving people the chance to be able to do these small little tasks on their own. Yeah, oh, definitely. <clears throat> oh, that's fantastic. So before using the Molly suit, she couldn't feed herself. No. And, and after, is this, um, cause I know that you can get a positive effect from the Molly suit for about 48 hours afterward, but does that's it, right. Does this improvement then build on, like if she, say, didn't use the suit for a week or so, can, is this an improvement that's now sort of a permanent part of her life? Yeah, that's right. So with continual use, we do yep. see better improvements. So, yeah, it's sort of a, a therapy that is, is ongoing for a lot of people. So whether it be once a week, we usually recommend two to three times a week initially just to yep. get that residual effect of 24 to 48 hours. Uh, some people will notice a longer effect, some people shorter. So, again, very individual response. So we just need to, I guess, program and set the, set the uh, parameters based on how they respond. Yeah. yeah. 
And um, yeah. I understand it kind of works um, through brain plasticity too, doesn't it? Like neuroplasticity, yeah. So, so, so plasticity, yeah. So yeah. Yes. So basically, trying to help build new neural pathways. So if you if you have a look, there's some like brain scans of people who've had pre and post Molly therapy, yep. and just the branch of neural uh, synapses everywhere after they've had the the therapy is actually amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. That's yeah. fantastic. So you've you've got real hard evidence there that that it's yeah. been it's been working. <laughs> yes, it has. Yes. What what does it mean for you when you can see a client that you've been working with start to experience some of these improvements? Oh, I don't even know if I can put that into words because I'm um, pretty. It's an amazing feeling, really, to see somebody just achieve such small. I shouldn't say small because for them it's a big result. Yep. Small for us, but big for people who don't have the, the luxury of being able to move around and do things for themselves. So to me, it's, uh, I don't know how to put that into words. It's, um, it's why I do the job, basically. Uh, I really enjoy just helping people and see, seeing them, how happy people become when they can just do something they've been trying to do for so long and then all of a sudden they can just do it. Oh whether it be walking or like using, like using a spoon even, or yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, as I said, it's just, it's why I love this job and why I do the job. Oh, it must be, it must be amazing. It must be immensely satisfying at the end of yes. the day. Very fulfilling. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yep. For sure. And what about parents too? What does it mean for them when they see their child achieve something? <laughs> Yeah, well, I've seen some parents burst into tears when their little one would like move an arm or something like that that they couldn't move before. And oh, yeah, it's I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't know how to put that into words. It's you know, it's just uh, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, I think in this line of work, it's, it's really important to have a genuine care for your patients, which I most definitely do. I usually form a pretty strong bond with these people. And uh, yeah, I just, I love to help them and see them achieve their goals and set new ones and smash those as well. So yeah. Oh, <laughs> that is really awesome. Good on you. <laughs> and I actually, um, I use the suit myself as yep. well. Okay. Um, in a different capacity, more okay. for like athletic uh, performance and recovery. So right. it can be used in that way as well, which a lot of people don't know about. So yeah, which is interesting. How, how in that is interesting. Can you hmm. tell us a bit, a bit more about that? How, how it can help a total able-bodied person? Oh, yeah. So in a couple of ways, actually, in things like mood, it can affect mood and, and improve sleep. Okay. So depending on, as I said, how we set or program the control unit, mm -hmm. it can evoke a response like a hormone release, which can relax you or make you feel good, basically. You release endorphins. Yeah. Um, also pain reduction. If you have any aches or pains, just general aches or pains, like a lower back pain, I use it for my sore back. Yeah. Um, or as I said, recovery. So... For athletic performance, I use it before I go and play sport. And yep. basically, the easiest way to explain it is um, when your brain sends a signal to your muscles, yep. it has to reach a certain threshold. The signal has to reach a certain threshold before your muscle will move. So what it does is it, it brings that signal just sub-threshold. So it's a lot easier to make movements and to control movements. So, yeah, it does work for me in, in the athletic performance category and uh with recovery it just promotes like blood flow which then delivers nutrients to your muscles and helps them heal quicker do you think if you're a professional athlete and you're using the molly suit do you think it would help improve your performance i i personally do yes i do um i've been running some just little experiments on myself really and uh 
I, I play I play touch football at a competitive level still, even though I'm pretty old. What? That's cool. <laughs> but, uh, I still play, and uh, yeah, my teammates are like, "What is this thing you're using?" Like, <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> great. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's- Fantastic. Because um, I interviewed Natasha Price, who's a wheelchair racer. Yes, um, yeah. Yeah, you would know Natasha. And yes. she said that after using the suit, her times went up um, or oh. down, the time that she yeah. could have yeah, yeah. Yeah, down. Improved, yeah. The yeah. performance improved and her times went down. Yeah. Yes. Yep. I would well, agree with that. I understand that you work with um, spinal cord injury patients as well. Can you tell me a little bit about those clients and and how the suit can can help people with spinal cord injuries? Yeah, so basically the people I see with spinal cord injuries at Making Strides normally have uh, mobility issues. Yeah. And, yeah, we generally, I haven't seen anyone yet that is fully uh, incapacitated, but... Yeah, they've usually got some sort of movement, but have trouble controlling movement. So, as I said, it just um, it helps with motor control and just the fluency of walking. Is but the main the main uh, improvements we've seen with those people down there. Yep. And uh, I guess you with uh, spinal cord injury or any type of injury like that, you sort of face and you know other mental issues as a result of their injuries which yeah the suit does help you make make you feel better and move oh definitely yeah what would you say to clients who might be a bit concerned about the cost of the molly suit um like the because it it is quite an expensive device isn't it and using it can be expensive well it can be uh it's there's different ways to go about it. So for people who are covered by NDIS, yep. we can get you funding through NDIS so you can get fully covered. There's no out-of-pocket expense. Oh, that's great. Um, if anyone's paying privately, there are different options. So if you didn't need the exercise physiology as well as the Molly suit, you could just come in for Molly and it's a lot cheaper. It's half the price. So you can just sit and do your own Molly with your own exercise program if you like. So... There are ways around it, um, but I would say it's it's worth it. It's yeah. worth the money. And the first one or two sessions, we normally give you free, free of charge, just to see if it's for you and if it's something you'd like to continue with. So it's definitely worth a try. Yeah. Uh, because it's, not, it's no out-of-pocket expense for the first two sessions. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So um, maybe tell us that if um, if I had a child with cerebral palsy and I came to see you, what's kind of the progression of care leading to, because I understand that some people then um, end up renting or even purchasing the suit at the end and having it at home and their child can use it indefinitely, say, at home. So what would, yeah. what would be the process? Come in to see you first? Yep. So generally we'd get the child in first of all to do a trial. Yep. We do one or two trials just to make sure we're getting benefit from the suit, which sure. they're totally free of charge. Yep. Um, I would run a few little assessments on that on the child just to make sure we are getting a benefit. Yep. And then from there, if if the parent wanted to then go ahead and sort of do one once a week therapy to begin with or once or twice a week therapy in, in clinic, we could do that. Yep. Uh, or we can just go straight to apply for a rental. So we would just go through sort of the support coordinator and I'd prepare a report mm-hmm. um, with my recommendations on there and then hopefully we could get some funding through NDIS. Yeah. Uh, and then we just set the, set the uh, program up for the child. Yep. They take it home, use it usually three to four times a week we recommend to begin with. Yep. Uh, some people like to up that eventually to once a day. Okay, yep. Uh, yep, then we, from there, once a month, that child would have a free appointment with me to come and adjust any programming. We touch base just to make sure that the program is still working and that they're, they're seeing results. Sometimes we need to alter the program to increase the, the STEM oh. once they become accustomed to that sort of program. So like like any other type of exercise program or 
something of the likes, yeah, you need to sort of progress along. Sure. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's a good sign then, obviously, if you can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we do also offer a uh, rent to buy. We have a rent to buy yeah. policy. So if you were to get a rental for, say, three or six months, we might go in three month blocks, three yep. months, three months, three months. Once you've been renting for 12 months continuously, you would then, all the child parents would own the suit. Oh, great. Mm. Oh, so that's probably the most successful way we go through NDIS to get a purchase of the suit. So then that child has that suit and they get a free ups, upsize once a year, I believe. So, yeah. Oh, of course. Because they grow out of, good. yeah. They're growing. Kids, they're growing. Kids yeah. are growing, <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, wow. Do you have many people in Australia at the moment who are, are doing this plan, have yes. the suit at home and are using it regularly? That's where my, most of our clientele will go along that, that pathway because yep. it's, it's the best way to do it So and most economical. And as I said, the way we get the most success through NDIS funding as well. So if you went to NDIS and just said, I wanted to get a purchase outright, Yep. They may not come to the party on that one, but uh, if you break it down into three or six month rental blocks, yep. they seem to be more receptive to that. Oh, that's fantastic. And do you have many clients out there who have gone on this plan that are really happy with it and experiencing benefits and it's part of their daily life now or weekly routine? Yeah, yeah, we've got plenty of, um, as I said, probably about, we just recently had a spike in rentals, I think, through COVID, people were happy with it because it's like an in-home therapy. You don't have to go out of your house to do the therapy, which is a bonus. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'd say probably 80% of our clientele are now renting. So oh. they, they're renting to buy. And some people have already finished their rental period, so they, they now own that suit outright. Oh, that's great. Because um, you're right, during the pandemic, it, it, it must be extremely useful because um, one study did come out for children with cerebral palsy that showed that the use of the suit was as, at least as good as uh, physiotherapy sessions. So um, it equaled out. So um, yeah. I think if you couldn't physically go and see your physiotherapist because of any amount of lockdowns or concerns about the virus, you can be using it at home and getting... That's right. Yeah, that, that was a huge bonus through through lockdown that uh, these people could still access this therapy, you know, as many times a week as they wanted to yep. without having to leave their house. So, it's, yeah, really safe in, in the, during the pandemic. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, what about um, the old argument um, where people might say, well, are the improvements that you see due to the placebo effect or, you know, that, that sort of thing? Um, what would you say about that from what you... Uh, I say if it's a placebo effect and it works, then it works. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, That's true, though. I mean, placebo's got to be the best drug out there, really. <laughs> yeah, but there has been scientific evidence to say that it does, like, um, as I said, with the serotonin release, they've measured, like, spinal cord serotonin. It's been up, like, 400%, be like, from before Molly suit to after Molly suit. So... Wow. There are there is hard evidence to say that it, it's doing something in your body, you know, like so it's not just a placebo effect. Yeah. If you like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Yes, I have looked at there are studies, definitely, and there's a relatively new study showing how it can help with um stroke patients. Um I think that just came out about a year or so ago. So Yeah, there's um, a few in the works at the moment. I think COVID might have thrown a spanner in the works with a few of them, but yeah. Um, yeah, they're working towards getting more studies and more, more case studies as well yeah. at the moment. So, yeah. Have you got any clients, um, stroke um, patients, who, who have um, seen some benefit? Yes. Um, they can move a limb that they couldn't move before. We don't recommend exclusively using Molly suit, so we don't want you to go and replace any other therapies or anything like that. We, we, recommend using it in conjunction with other therapies. So you still use your physio and your OT and all your other bits and pieces through your OT, but you would just, it just adds to those, those therapies. And I guess you get more out of the other therapies when you use the suit as well. Oh, alongside. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's so true. So tell me a little bit about um, 
if you have a child come in with cerebral palsy and they put the suit on, um, mm -hmm. what, walk us through the session then. Um, what are you doing with the child? Are you helping them move? Um, are you helping them walk? Um, yeah, well, it, it depends how that child presents. Some kids come to me and they can't move at all. So we just work on coordination, um, even just tracking with their eyes, that type of thing. Um, meeting small milestones, if you like. Yeah. Um, if the child has some sort of ability in the lower body, would obviously work on strength and trying to get that child to stand, yeah. walk, assisted to begin with. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of it's coordination with kids yeah. and also obviously keeping it fun. <laughs> so yeah. playing games and not try not to make it feel like a therapy session if you like so yeah. yeah yeah and have you seen children with cerebral palsy improve their coordination and their movement through yeah. and therapy with you yes so i'm thinking of a couple of kids i've seen one little girl as i said she, sometimes i come to you with no movement she had no movement mm -hmm. and uh, after using the suit could sort of push herself up uh, lift her head, move her head around, track objects, uh, reach for things. Like, yeah, just small milestones that, yeah, are really, uh, the parents are so excited when they just reach these really small little milestones. But for them, it's, it's a huge improvement. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I know that a lot of these chronic um, problems there isn't, there isn't a cure like uh, out there. So any therapy that can help improve quality of life, like you said, is really valuable. That's it. Yeah. And just trying to make it, things a little bit easier for people. Yeah. yeah. That's basically what we're about. So, yeah. It's probably like for an able-bodied person when you do um, an aerobics workout or something, um, it might be awful at the time, but then afterwards, yeah, you're like moving better or, but the most... Yeah. What's it like wearing it though? Is it uncomfortable at all? Um, what does it feel like when it's on? Well, as I said, it's tight fitting. Yeah. So it feels just like wearing a wetsuit if you've ever put a wetsuit or something really snug. Yeah. Um, but the actual uh, electric skin is, is quite relaxing feeling. It feels almost like uh, bubbles on your skin or something like that. So right. I really enjoy the feeling of it. Most people I've encountered do enjoy the feeling. Yeah. Oh. And I've had a few people who are non-verbal and you just see them, they smile when it, it turns on and they smile. Like, oh. yes, yeah, lovely feeling. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's really mm. great. I've, um, I've seen on your Facebook page um, that there are some videos that you've posted of before and afters and there's some really striking ones of um, people with uncontrolled tremors and after yes. wearing the suit, they, they're still, their muscles are stilled. Um, they can move and um, even sleep better. Yep. So tremors, even uh, unwanted involuntary movements. I've had some people, like Huntington's um, patients, yep. who had really out of control leg movements in particular. And yep. after wearing the suit, uh, the feet are just still or almost still. So, yeah. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, which is a... <laughs> It's, yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a, a vast improvement for those, those people that I've seen. Oh, absolutely. What do you see um, for the future of the Molly suit use? Like, do you, do you think the um, usage is, is only going to grow as these studies come in and people experience benefits? Yeah, so I think it's becoming more and more mainstream, uh, yeah. even as we speak. So even over the past year, we've seen a lot more usage, but also... Uh, doctors recommending or physios recommending because they've seen the benefits of it f for themselves oh, and that's purely through going out and showing them <laughs> how it works and they can see with their own eyes how it works yeah yeah oh, so, yeah I think it, it's it'll grow over the next you know five to ten years and it'll be more as I said, used in rehab in hospitals and things like that, which is what happens over in Sweden at the moment. They use it in hospitals. It's just a, a mainstay. So, oh. yeah, we don't, we don't have that here yet. Um, still a very early stages for us. So, yeah. Yeah. It's sort of difficult to get your head around. So until you actually see it for yourself, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that um, 
even doctors are like, I don't, I don't understand how this works or, but it, it does if you see it with your own eyes. We do have a couple of physios at the moment that, and OTs, uh, yeah. that are quite receptive to the use of the suit. Oh, good. Uh, there's a physio I'm working, oh, I have been working with, he, he works with brain injury okay. uh, patients. Yep. And he, he's a huge advocate for it. He said he's seen so many great improvements uh, in his clients that are using the suit as well as doing his physio. Oh, so wow. during his sessions, they're getting more out of the sessions with him yep. after they've been using the suit. Oh, that's wonderful. That's mm. great. And that's what studies that have come out of Sweden are, are saying, aren't they? That, that patients do get better benefits um, when they're wearing the suit. Exactly that's what you right. said as an adjunct yeah. therapy. Mm. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any contraindications to using the Molly suit? There are a couple. Uh, any sort of pump or pacemaker. So magnetic devices implanted is, we, unfortunately, we can't use the suit just because we might, uh, the electrostim could affect the settings on those like baclofen pumps, um, yep. pacemakers. Yeah. I think that's about it. Yeah. The other one is uh, epilepsy. If you've got like current symptoms of epilepsy, they don't recommend it. Oh. Um, however, I have had some people who you just wanted to, to go ahead and try anyway, yep. and they didn't have any problem with it. But okay. yeah, yep. they got permission from their GP to do it. So yeah. Oh, great. Do you think the difficultiness of putting it on and off can be a little bit of a challenge for um, clients. Like how do you, because it's tight. It can be. Yeah, so that's, I know you've seen it with the zips on the side, I guess that's to help get in and out of it. Yeah. Uh, some people have to actually put it on in like lying down position. So they'll need a, somebody to give them a hand to put it on. Yeah. So in the clinic, I like we normally get the carers to dress to dress anyone who needs a hand with that. But yep. I mean, we can always yeah, help out if needed, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, is a, it is a little bit difficult to get on. I think yeah. they're working on a new prototype at the moment, which is to, it, the jacket's in two pieces. So it makes it a lot easier to get it on. Oh, right. The jacket and the trousers, so they kind of clip together. Yeah, oh. which would make life a lot easier. Yeah, <laughs> actually, I think it would. Yeah, yeah, because I do know that it has to be a really tight fitting. Um, yes, you need the contact on the skin with the like the electrostim pads to contact the skin for best results. So, yeah. No. So children with cerebral palsy, they're not scared of wearing it. They don't. They don't get frightened. I, I haven't encountered anyone that's been scared yet. Um, it's all in the delivery, I guess. So we usually, if there's a, someone a, a child that's a bit uh, iffy about putting it on, we'll tell them they look like a superhero or something like that. And then they, once they've got it on, they're fine, yeah, because they just move around and do whatever they, they need to do, so play and whatever. But, uh, I, yeah, I haven't encountered that at this stage. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Can you mm -hmm. overdo it? Can you use it too much? Yep, <laughs> you can. Uh, if you were to, again, depending on how you respond to it, yep. some people, once a day is too much. Okay. Too many, too many sessions. It's, it's overstimulating that nervous system, okay, which yeah. is why we recommend initially three to four times a week. Okay, yeah. Uh, for others, once a day is totally acceptable and fine. It, it suits them and it makes them, uh, gives a better benefit. Yeah. Uh, yep. I definitely would not recommend going more than once a day, though. Sure. Yep. Once a day would be your maximum. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know, one of the things I love the most about the Molly suit I love how it was designed. Like, I love that it was a doctor with MS who um, was experimenting on himself with all these TENS machines and his carer was the chiropractic student, wasn't he? Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, what's his name? The, um, not Jürgen. Um, I can't remember his name. Yeah, the other, the other, the, the other founder of the suit. And, and um, so that was the self-experimental sort of thing, like, you know, having these electrodes all over him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I, I love well, it from the ground up. <laughs> yes. Well, I think the actual theory behind, like, that reciprocal inhibition and 
that theory is like hundreds of years or hundred years old, say. Um, but the fact that he's put it all like in a suit, that's what's made it sort of a, a new innovative way of delivering the therapy, if you like. So, yeah. A game changer. It sounds like yeah. it, it's really working and, and effective for many mm. people like to. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely agree with that. Oh, that's so positive. That's really fantastic. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Renee, for taking the time to chat to us today and to tell us about your experiences with it. And um, thank you for your work too. Um, no, you're welcome. Yeah, it's my pleasure, really. So <laughs> thank you very much for having me. Oh, no, it's great. Honestly, thank you so much for your time. And you take care and you stay safe in, in Brisbane. Um, <laughs> I will do. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Uh, see ya. Bye. Bye.